What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with the latest episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We've got a killer guest back with us today, Lee Barrison. I think he's on his third appearance. We're talking about how to be better, hustling to be better, and not just to do more. So this is going to be a really fun episode. We've got a, a lot to get to. Uh, we'll talk about leadership. We'll talk about growing teams. We'll talk about hustling and hustling the right way. All kinds of fun stuff. Gene Volpe, the evil bald ninja, is with us as well. But first, before we get to those guys, my partner in all things crime and podcasting related, Greg McDaniel, in the co-pilot seat. What's up today? What up, man? Good to be here. It's a beautiful Friday morning out here. Um, come on hot off of a listing appointment I went out on from doing my calls with Red X. Uh, took down a $3 million listing in seven minutes after sitting down. Lock walked out the front door in 10, uh, and I led with value add. I offered to do uh, some video work for him and his other business. It's a dog kennel next door, and how to promote him and give him some more visibility. And I showed him some of my past work that Viral did for me, editing up some stuff on Viral. Dude literally locked it down. Uh, a few minutes after that and walked out. We're sending over the listing agreement today. A uh, booyah. It's just from hard work and hustle. And that's one of the things that uh, you guys, if you guys aren't watching this right now, we got Lee and in the background behind Lee, he has a giant sign that says hustle. Uh, and I think that's take can be taken in multiple different ways, but it's going to be a great, great show. So I'm, I'm happy to have you back, my friend. Lee, welcome to the show, brother. Um, let's let's talk about growth. But first, before we do that, we got to do Gene Volpe, Volpe, the evil bald ninja, the uh, the marketer from another mother. What's up, man? The marketer from another mother. That's, That's not bad, bad, actually. So I don't know if you see. <laughs> did you see my sign behind us? His says hustle. Mine says pizza. <laughs> hustle pizza. <laughs> That's right. What's it's a very boy, personal Gene? statement of loyalty. Yeah. All right. So first of all, what's up, Gene? I think that might be your new nickname, marketer from another mother. Love it. <laughs> and then, and then Lee, officially welcome, man. Thanks so much for joining us again. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. So we're, we've got a bunch of stuff to get to, but before we dive into kind of uh, what, like the journey of how you got to here, give us a snapshot of physically where you're located, uh, what the team looks like, how many agents, stuff like that, and maybe what you're on pace to do as we close out 2019. Sure. So, um, yeah, Matt, Greg, Gene, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it being here again. Um, Bakersfield, California, Central Valley. About two hours north of Los Angeles, <clears throat> uh, got a small indie uh, brokerage that we run here called uh, the Infinity Real Estate, uh, Infinity Real Estate Services, I apologize. Um, but yeah, we uh, currently are at 39 agents and um, per, per, or per agent production, we're averaging about 16.3 transactions per agent this year uh, within our group of 39 agents. Um, we are on track to hit anywhere between 450, perhaps to 470 transactions uh, this year. Last year, we closed out at 286, um, and we ended the year uh, last year at, uh, at 20, I'm sorry, 25 agents. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, wow. So growth up and down all around is what kind of what you're, where you're going with this stuff, and kind of what we're yeah. talking about off air is the fact that you know, you went high, then you whittle down low, and then you're regrowing the correct way. A lot of, a lot of agents in this industry, what I've found is, in a, in probably in every business across the board, they want to get as many agents as possible. What you do is you acquire a <coughs> lot of dead wood in there. you got to manage dead wood. Is that what you, were, you, you kind of experienced, right? Absolutely, Greg. I mean, you know, so like, like we were talking off air before this uh, podcast began, but, you know, uh, when we opened up our, our office two years ago, two and a half years ago, uh, my only intention was to build this mega office with just people that have heartbeats. I don't give a shit if, they, if they're product, producing or not, but I'm just trying to build up the agent count, not paying attention to the production. Right. right. And, and so like we're, yeah, it's a huge problem. There's a lot of companies out there, you know, these huge giant offices within any town or borough across the United States. And that's all they focus on hoping that, Perhaps John might do one deal. It may be his own house. It may be a short sale, maybe overpriced, but at least we get that one transaction out of John before he expires, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and, and so, you know, again, my, 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 my mindset wasn't in the right place in the beginning because, again, you know, I, 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 I wasn't focusing on the parade of production. I was just focusing on putting bodies and dead wood 
you know, adding dead wood to my, to my office. And, uh, last year we got to 49 agents. And then at that particular time, when, when we, when we hit 49 agents, mind you, two years ago, we had, we started with two. So we got up to about 49, uh, 49 yes. agents in one year. And then I started looking at the per agent production and we're at about 4.5 deals per agent. And that was really frustrating at that point because, you know, something clicked in my head where I just said, you know what, this is this is bullshit. I mean, we have so many unproductive people and so little productive people. You know, why don't we wind down the clock and just start slashing people and giving them 30 day notices? And if they're willing to jump on board and do what we, what we teach them to do, then they can stay. But if they don't, then they're welcome to leave. Well, in the matter of three different waves, which took, took in anywhere between, uh, I would say, about three to four months of 30-day notices and 90-day notices, we wound up getting rid of 25 agents. Wow. And that uh, brought our, our per-agent production back up to where it's now at 16.3. So, I, you know. How did, pe how did people take that when you when you started slashing them? You know, and just cutting them, wouldn't I'm like, hey man, you're just not, you ain't cutting the mustard, homie. You got to go. I mean, were, were yeah. people butthurt about it? Were they frustrated? Uh, were they upset? Were, did they own their their mess up? You know, how did how did that go over? Because a lot of things people are are afraid of firing or eliminating agents because you work so freaking hard to to get people into the into their into their brokerage, and then you're like, you ain't, you're not doing it. You got to go. I mean, how, how did mm -hmm. that conversation go? That's a good question. You know, at the beginning for me internally, it sucked because I had the same mentality. You know, I don't want to get rid of anybody that I, I allowed to jump on board in the first place. But, you know, over time and over, over you know, being trained and coached by, by some good management coaches, you know, um, they instilled some good values and standards within my business to where, you know, because, I mean, if you really look at the majority of our industry, a lot of our, our industry doesn't have any standards uh, within – their brokerages. I mean, you know, if, if, if you don't show up for a month, it's okay. You know, mm. if you don't sell anything for a month, it's okay. You know, and, uh, and, and, you know, because of the training and the coaching that I think I received, it, it dawned on me that, oh shit, I got to have standards. Right. <laughs> and so, so that's what we implemented. You know, we implemented, uh, uh, you know, standards such as you have to show up. You know, not you don't have to show up six days a week, but we definitely want to see your face, at, you know, at least twice or three times a week in the office with your headset on prospecting. Um, we want to see what you're we want to start tracking your numbers. We want to start tracking your production. We want to, you know, start <clears throat> having, um, you know, more training sessions and you need to be available during those training sessions. And these are the standards that we started implementing. So when we did and people weren't showing up, that's when we started doing these or implementing these 30 day notices and you know to answer your, your question greg these uh a lot of the agents you know there's um uh, there was a response in a lot of different areas right so so some agents i would say perhaps maybe a third of them took ownership of 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 what they weren't doing mm. and then i would say half of that third said okay i'm going to start showing up and plugging in because i don't want to leave so I want to keep those people, mm -hmm. right? Because they showed the effort to like jump back on board or recommit to the system. Um, I would say a third of them never even responded to the 30 day notice. They just kind of <laughs> it away. Like the wood yeah, in the ocean just, just floating like, away. Maybe if I just don't say anything, he'll forget about it. Um, yeah, that's not how that works. You know, and, and then obviously, you know, those were relatively easy agents to get rid of. Um, and then, yeah, there was a third that, you know, um, had a rebuttal to it and felt that they were worthy to stay. And, you know, I, I, you know, being that I don't like getting rid of people, I, I tell them, you know, don't tell me, show me, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you think that you're worthy to stay, then I'll give you an, an extra 30 days starting today, you know, but at least they responded, which was the, which was more important than anything else, because that third that doesn't respond, obviously they weren't designed to be here in the, in the, in the, uh, in the beginning. Right. That's interesting. Um, so definitely you've got the conversational side of it. You've got the discomfort of having those types of conversations. I want to talk a little bit about the maybe the leadership and ego challenge of it, because obviously we're in a numbers driven driven industry and you, you can you can define yourself on a lot of different numbers and what number you choose to define yourself on will affect all the way up and down the line, like how you choose to operate and grow your business. So I'm curious, first of all, 
uh, there, there's, it sounds like there was a change in how you defined success and what number you decided to attach success to. So first of all, what was that like and why did you change the number that defined whether you were successful? Whew, Matt, that's such a great question. So I started looking at the NAR statistics, right? And the NAR, so okay. NAR statistics showed that the average agent closes four and a half transactions per agent or per per year. Mm -hmm. And when I started looking at that number, you know, I mean, in Bakersfield alone at four and a half transactions, Greg, you know, we can't survive off $5,000 yeah. commission, right? Yeah. So that's yeah, an that's average. A, that's a part-time job. That's less than a McDonald's manager in Bakersfield. You're more money at McDonald's, yeah. 100%. Yep. So, you know, uh, so being that the average agent in the United States only closes four and a half transactions per year, that number really stood out to me versus, you know, I have 300 agents in my office right. and we're all producing at, you know, uh, four and a half transactions per agent. You know, that, mm -hmm. that, that number didn't impress me nearly as much as the number of the, and, you know, here, here's another um, statistic is that Greg Harrelson, you know, uh, that you know very well, all of us know very well, you know, his, his office, I, I, I believe last time I met with him at the management retreat in San Diego, he said he was averaging 28 units per agent in his office or something crazy like that. Wow. Yeah, I'm and, assuming that means like the core team within the overall brokerage because he's got multiple offices and he's bringing on a couple of like new offices and like I don't think any of those numbers factor in. But yeah, for like the team that internally reports directly to him, I think that he would consider quote unquote his team within his brokerage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. That's only, that's only, what is that? Two to three deals per, between, between two and three deals per month. Like if you're yeah. in Greg Harrelson's world and you roll into an office where Greg Harrelson shows up every day and you do less than two or three deals a month, like something is wrong, wrong with you. You're not spending enough time with Greg Harrelson. Uh, can you yeah. imagine showing up to an office every day with that guy and not selling two homes a month? You're not going to last long. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I mean, you okay. know, so it's, it's, it's that number that you're talking about. You know, it's that number mm -hmm. that I decided to attach my, my psyche to because of the fact that, you know, I, I'm much more proud of having a high per agent production number versus having the most agents in town in my building. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's kind of the lesson that I wanted to draw out a little bit because it's like this applies, I, like I don't care what your measure of success is. Like you, we could be having a conversation about billionaires sitting in a room and if one person defines their success by the number of Super Bowls that the team they own wins and the other defines his success in terms of how many oil fields he dominates in Saudi Arabia, you know what I'm saying? Like you, it doesn't like it, it works. Like you get two guys in a room together and they're going to figure out some sort of pecking order <laughs> between the two of them and who's winning in what area. And you have to decide for yourself internally, what is the game that you're playing? And, yeah. and I love the fact that you've basically decided like, Hey, look, everybody, everybody in the indie brokers game is kind of playing this game of either overall production, like just to get the biggest number possible, or they're flat out playing a, an agent number game. I'm not going to play that game. I'm just going to play a different game. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you're listening to this and you're an agent and you're wondering, well, how, do this, how does this apply to me? I'm not a broker. Here's how it applies. While your other people in the office are judging their success based on either how hard they feel like they're trying or the market, or maybe they're successful, but they judge themselves by how many, like how high their production is. You can, you can play another game. You know, you can, you can play your game based on how often you keep in touch with the key people in your database. You can judge it based on the number of deals that you do, the number of prospecting calls that you make. Like you choose the game that you're playing and you choose what your ego attaches to and tells you whether you're doing a good job or not. Like you're the one that sets the rules of that game. 100%. Yeah. yeah. You, you just have to decide what that, what that uh, number looks like for you. You know, um, I think that, you know, you hit it right on the head that it's, it's your ego is going to tell you what number is most important to you. Mm -hmm. But to me, you know, I th and I think it's a good bragging point, too. You know, it's something that I actually brag about and be proud of. You know, I, I can talk to a broker that's, you know, the egos he's telling or his egos telling me, hey, look, I got 300 agents in my office. Good. What's your per agent production? Oh, it's like four. OK, mm -hmm. well. Sounds like you got a lot of dead wood in your backyard. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stack, stacking agents up like cordwood. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, Gene, let's go to you real quick. Like when you, because I want to talk about this just real briefly, and then we'll get back into some other stuff about kind of shrinking to grow and and hustling to be better. Um, I'm curious, like from your perspective, talking about like the ego, um, 
what 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 not like what game are you playing? What do you, what do you feel like your ego kind of attaches itself to to keep track of whether you're doing a good job in your in your business? Because you're a little bit outside, like you're in the marketing arena, and marketing agency owners don't compete with each other in the same way. Yeah. Yeah, so wait, ask me that question again. Uh, but as far as yeah, goes, it's what's the number? Listening. Yeah, what's what's the number that tells you whether you're doing a good job or not? So we don't we don't have things like, uh, you know, like we don't have people like eight. Like you can you can you know you can say that we kind of go off the size of our teams a little bit, maybe the number of clients that we have, but that stuff has changed. It's it's always in flux. It's a little bit different from taking on a new agent where they're you know they're going to be with you for a year or two. You, your clients might be there for 90 days and you get the project done, you move on. So yeah, I'm just I'm just curious from your perspective, what 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 game are you playing, and where does like how do you know? How does your ego tell you? Oh, I'm doing a good job because I hit this number. Yeah, I, for me, I think it's pretty simple because I have two numbers. One of one which is what I have outgoing every month, and that's like bills from the business, bills from the, in the household, and then there's a spread on how much money I'm making over top of that. And mm -hmm. in my head, let's uh, just for simple numbers. Let's say I have five thousand dollars in bills going out, and I'm I'm bringing in ten grand a month. That to me is a decent month because of the because of the excess. So I I I have a percentage that I shoot for in profit that mm. each month I look at. And if I don't, right. I, I, it's a stretch number in a lot of cases, right? So like I always try to put. The, I used to have something at Verizon. They used to call them stretch objectives, and they mm -hmm. would say set up a stretch objective for your team members. And a lot of times they won't hit it. When they do, it's a huge win. But right. even when they don't hit it, they probably hit their original objective. So, like, in Lee's case, the number is 16, right? So I might say this year we're shooting for 20 on average. Well, guess what happens? You you strive for that. Everybody hits 17.5. You're up from last year. Not quite where you where you hope to be, but you're up from, from the previous year. So I feel like mm -hmm. I have a percentage over the amount of, of, of cost I spend that I know that I need to hit. And if I mm -hmm. hit it bigger one day, it's a nicer stake than, than maybe the previous month. Yeah, and I, and I like that. I mean, in terms of like like one of the biggest issues for not only for real estate teams, agency owners, whatever the case is, if you're employing people, yeah, like per percentage of profit, if you have a certain, like if you know what model you're running, you should know what, in general, what profit percentage you're looking at and making sure that you're hitting that. So yeah, like again, it goes back to kind of Lee, your overall focus was, look, you've got a top line number, I'm going to focus on a different number. I'm going to change the game that I'm playing. I'm not going to get caught up in just competing over the top line numbers that actually, at the end of the day, don't put more money in your pocket. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And you know, just to piggyback on on the per agent production, why it's so another reason why it's so important is that you know we, we lost a few good agents, like really good agents that are that were closing anywhere between 50 to 70 transactions. Okay. Because I was bringing in these non-producing, low energy, non-profitable agents because they don't want to be surrounded by a bunch of these people. Yeah. And, you know, th that's one of the re I mean, that's what they told me. This is why I'm leaving. And it was Good. very painful to see those people leave because of the fact that I, I invested so much time in coaching them up and getting them to where they wanted to be. But they're so competitive that they're like, dude, you're creating an arena that I don't even want to be in anymore. That's you know. interesting. Wow. Yeah, that'll uh, that'll drive the point home. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's talk about the overall uh, the process that you went through, which was you start by kind of getting uh, like putting the people that shouldn't be in your world in a position where they have to make a choice, either become the right type of person or find somebody else to align with. Great. So you start that. So you go through this process of shrinking and getting down to you've got like the right people in your world. So I want to talk a little bit about how maybe that same mentality carries over into other areas because you're definitely a hustle guy. You're a hard worker. Uh, I know the way that you lead your agent and you're leading your agents to to put a like to change and develop and adapt to have a great work ethic. Yeah. So how, how do you help them work hard at the right things and not just spin their wheels thinking they're working hard but not being effective? Well, okay. So, like, again, I you're you're right. I mean, I I'm I'm just a big believer in massive hard work. You know, that's how I was raised as a kid. My dad is a contractor. Me as an iron worker before I got into real estate 18 years ago. And so when I got into real estate, I never I didn't know anything better than to just simply work my ass off and grind through everything. And I'm just gonna beat you. Period. Just based off the hard work. 
But, you know, I, I also realize after being in leadership that not everybody has that same uh, uh, mindset or wants that mindset because it's not attractive to everybody, you know. Yeah. And so, like, for instance, you know, uh, some some folks don't want to bang the phones for two or three hours. You know, they're just they're not conditioned to do that. You know, some folks don't like talking to expireds because they don't like the the resistance that they give them or for sale by owners the resistance that they give them. So I have to I have to identify, I guess, what the agent number one is motivated by. Right. So, I mean, you know, we're all in this business motivated by something. Me being a capitalist, it's money. You know, um, but but, you know, I, I again, I mean, not everybody is motivated by money, which I've discovered, too. You know, some some folks are motivated by. Helping other people, helping people, you know, being a philanthropist, stuff like that. That's cool. You know, but those people there, their production's probably not going to be nearly as high as some of the people that I've worked with where we can get in two years or less. We get them up to 50, 70 transactions. You know, we got one guy on the, on the team right now that hasn't even entered his second year and he's on track to hit 72. And he's mm -hmm. been only in the business for about a year and a half. Yeah. You know, so but he grinds it. and He, he bangs the phones and. Um, you know, it's just identifying what, what their motivation is or what their motive is. And then, uh, and then, you know, if you don't like banging the phones and let's do open houses, you know, and get really good at them. You know, if you don't so, like uh, doing open, go ahead. I'm sorry, Gene. No, no, I wanted to jump in there because you're saying some stuff that's fascinating to me. And I, you know, I hope these guys don't mind it. They, they hate when I'm quiet, but um, mm -hmm. I was a hiring manager with a, with a fortune 15 company for a long time. And there was always these little things that we had in place. And I'm curious from your perspective, now that you know that you had to had to self fix the agents that didn't belong there, what, what kind of mechanisms do you have in place? Number one, to make sure that they have the hustle you want. Number two, they have the proper drive and why. And number three, that they're going to fit on that team. And so I asked that question because I'm sure people are listening that would want to do the same type of thing you're doing. And I'm looking for advice on how do you how do you cut out all the crap that you had to go through right up front? Like maybe this isn't going to work as opposed to waiting six months until you figure out it's not working. Good question. Um, well, Gene, I mean, you know, honestly, I, so like for instance, the folks that, that you're referring to that, that we had to take a step back and then they were willing to fix themselves. Right. Uh, we implemented a, a 90 day, uh, uh, a 90 day pr uh, production uh, platform, I guess the best way to put it. Right. And so for instance, you know, I, I want everyone to be able to be comfortable on talking to people. I mean, in our business, if you're not talking to people, you're a secret agent, you have skinny kids. So, you know, we, we have to, we, we have to learn to talk to people. And so in order, you know, for the first 30 days on that production challenge, I'm sorry, production, uh, 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 format is basically on, in the second week, of the first 30 days, they have to make two hours of mojo calls five days a week. They have to run through their entire COI that first the 30 days. You know, they have to talk to everybody in their COI one time. Um, then we also start creating systems to make them more efficient to cut out the time like you were mentioning, such as, uh, you know, we have a number tracking system. So, you know, it's, it's, it's everything that you, like in sales, you know, you know, you, you got to have somewhere where you put all your numbers that start showing you your ratios, right? People that track their numbers, if you don't have somewhere to put those numbers after you track them, well, you're you're, you're not doing yourself any justice because you got to have somewhere to put them. So we start mm -hmm. having them put their numbers into a number analyzer, and then that will start tracking their ratios, which really helps me coach them because you know men lie. Women lie, but the numbers never ever lie. And so, if we could start a lot or pushing or, you know, convincing the agent to put the numbers into the analyzer, then the ratios will start telling a real clear story over 60 to 90 days. Okay, um, you know, the, the the second 30 days we get a little bit tougher. So we start talk, uh, we have them start doing two open houses per month, uh, and start making five expired calls per day, five days a week, and Two hours of mojo uh, per day, five days a week, and then lastly, the, the third, uh, the third 30, um, 90 days, uh, we are talking about four sell by owners, uh, expires, COI, and we kind of crush it all together. 
I guess, way, the best way to put it, on the last 30 days. Let me ask you a question. Why Why are the number? and this is just for me because I'm a, I'm a glutton for pain apparently, but I love to do the calls. You know, I use Red X. I love Red X. I think they're, what, they're, what they're doing for me has been fantastic. I started doing for rent by owner calls, which are the probably the easiest calls on God's green earth to make. Mm -hmm. it, why only five? Why only five calls? And then why why out in circle prospecting? Why not double down on the front runners for sale by owners expireds? You know, pre foreclosures. Why not go after the low hanging fruit versus doing circle prospecting? It's it's really just a matter of conditioning them to talk to people over anything else. So I mean, again, it, it you know I don't I won't discriminate if they want to talk to two hours of uh, by uh, rent rent by owners. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You know, if you want to talk, but again, I want them talking to people they don't know for two right. hours a day, five days a week. And it doesn't matter really where they come from, but circle prospecting obviously is a quick and easy way to be really efficient on the phones and get conditioned to talking to a lot of people. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I've been learning a lot about is the fact that, you know, and this is a very old adage. You all, we all know it is that when you think you're done, you're only at 40% of what you're possible, what you possibly can do. Um, I'm reading the book living with a seal right now. And that is Great a phenomenal one. book. Great one. Great book. You feel like such a fucking pussy about your workouts after you read that book and you're like, man, I crushed it. Then you read what these guys do in their workouts. You're like, I'm such a vagina. God. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I found uh, a valuable uh, lesson for us all to learn. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Greg, Greg specifically is a vagina. I thought you were a donk or what was it called, Matt? A donk you were talking about? A dongle. Oh, a dongle. dongle. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A, a mechanical attachment for a MacBook, a dongle. I, I'm a giant Oh, my dongle. God. <laughs> a giant dongle and a vagina at the same time. <laughs> that's where the babies come from, okay, Lee? <laughs> When the dongle right. meets the vagina. Never mind. Anyway, yeah. we're, we're totally okay. digressing. All right. But what I mean for for me for prospecting, uh, and then I'll go back to living with a seal and the whole thing about where I was going with that is that, you know, a lot of people we stop, and I'm I'm included in that. We stop when we get a couple of no's. But in reality, let's be serious here. What what is so bad about being told no? There are guys and gals that are putting their life on the line in our armed services, their police force, their first responders. They literally have people that are coming after them with machetes, trying to cut their heads off kidnap them, kill them, hurt their their loved ones, and you fucking pussy up when it comes to, I heard a no twice today, and you run and hide and cry? Are you fucking yeah. serious, dude? Well, go uh, Applicants for Walmart greeters are being, you know, filled out daily. Go be one of them. You know, don't sit here and bitch at me because you got told no, you freaking wuss. I, you you got to have us. You got to my. You you don't have to have thick skin. You just need to have ducks like a like a, a feathers like a duck. When the water goes on a duck's back, it rolls right off. You've yep. got to let the the nose roll right off of you. Otherwise, you will not last in this industry. And I want to see you succeed. Lee Lee wants you to, to Lee wants you to see succeed. Matt doesn't give a fuck. Gene loves you, um, but you know it's. <laughs> I got a kind of a head nod from my sh head shake from Matt today. Not quite the nose grab, but close. <laughs> <laughs> um, and all of you guys know that I completely joke around about Matt. Um, loving, caring, lovable, wonderful human being. Uh huh. Uh, in uh -huh. somebody's love book. you too, buddy. Know. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's true though. It's I think what Lee, what you're doing is you're showing tough love to the people who shouldn't be in the industry, and you're encouraging the people that that should be, and you're spending your time where it's best used. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that do not spend their time where it's best used. They they, they, they like to be, air quotes, busy, but not productive, you know, right. and, and there's a very big difference there. And I am 1,000% guilty of being busy, not productive at times, you know, moving the stack of papers from the right to the left, back to the right, and whew, that was a busy day, right? Of course, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, here, here's the other uh, truth about it, Greg, is that it, it, it's tough love, but the reason why it's tough love is because I care about them. Yeah. And I care about the production and I'm never going to tell them to do something that I haven't done in my past, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I've never, ever, ever, I don't know about you guys, cause you guys talk to a lot of people in real estate, but I've never met an agent that doesn't talk to people that gets paid a very, very high GCI per year. Just oh. never met them. No, you, you, so we always joke around of the fact that I'm the junior grandmaster and my father, Terry is the, is the grandmaster, me, Papa T Diddy, right? And it was a, it, talking about talking to people. So my dad and I were at an open house, broker's tour or caravan or whatever you guys call it yesterday. 
and I was running around. I was late. My dad was, my dad opened it up for me and I got there and I'm talking to him and this lady walks in, right? And uh, that guy could talk to a doorknob and it would grow a mouth and talk back. <laughs> he sat there and he talked to this woman. He asked her some of the most unique questions like, what did you do for a living? And then I bet you were wonderful about that in that industry. What was your favorite part? And you, I watched this woman stand up, come sit down, lean forward, and start fully engaging with him in a, in a detailed you know, conversation uh, to the point where I just had to get up and leave because I was like the third wheel. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not needed, and I left. <laughs> uh, but it's about having that conversation and getting involved in the other person's life, not having the, the 10,000 foot conversation of how's life. Oh, that's great. You're not really listening. It's really like, how you doing, man? Like, what's going on? Tell me, what's, what can I do to help you? Really getting deep in there. That's when people know that you really, that you really give a shit. And that, those people will make millions of dollars, yeah. millions. You know, it's just having, it's just having that, that really deep, really giving a shit conversation. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to think right now when the last time I, I had a good conversation like that, and it's been a while. You know, but it, but when you have them, they're great. It has been a while since you and I talked. I appreciate them. <laughs> it has been. <laughs> you hate me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's um, I was I was listening to part of the reason I, I bought the book that I was talk, talking to you guys about before we went live. Uh, this Urban Meyer book called Above the Line, uh, which I was telling you guys, it's, all, it's in the prologue is already one of the best leadership books I've read. But the reason I bought it is because I listened to. Urban Meyer talked a little bit about leadership and watched some videos of him going over it with the consultant that worked with his teams and actually did lead, like internal, like built their internal leadership system for their, for their organization. And the, like what Urban Meyer kept harping on was trust. And that as a leader, you inspire trust by being genuine, like genuinely putting that person, not, not in the sense that you're putting them first above your business or above the organization, but, but, showing that you genuinely care about them as a person, not just in the context of them being a cog in the wheel that gets you what you want. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that like showing that, that level of like building genuine relationships with people that, and then the trust that comes out of that. He's just like, that's the first step. All leadership starts with the trust that you earn and then you can inspire and motivate and you can lead into this, all this, all this other stuff. If you don't build the trust first, None of that other stuff matters. And I think that's true at, at every level. That goes from whether you're leading 40 agents or whether you're leading a client through a listing presentation, right? It's all leadership. Uh, like that, that's what's so fascinating to me about like these types of lessons that we can take in because it, it's, it's applicable at every level. You know, even just sitting across from someone in a consultation, like you're, they're looking to you to be the leader. You know, that's my two cents on that. No, it is true. I mean, in, in all aspects of it, in, in, in personal relationship and business relationship, people like to be led. They don't like to be told what to do, they, but they like to be led in a, in a direction that they feel is right for their life in whatever circumstance you want to put it in. And I think I, for me, sometimes I fail at doing that. I expect people just to do it on their own just because I've, I've done it on my own, you know, so much. Like if I have a bad day, there's no one to pick me up. I got to pick my own, myself up and, and keep moving forward. And I think, uh, Matt, I'm going to buy that book. And if, it, if you're misleading me on this book, I'm going to send you an invoice for $15. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Who's going to read it for you though? The Audible will, you jerk off. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> 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 oh man. Um, okay. So let's Lee, where can everyone get a hold of you? Uh, cause I, I know if you're going to send any referrals to Bakersfield or the surrounding areas in, I think it's Kern County, right? Yes, sir. You got to send them to, to Lee and his team. How do people get a hold of you, my friend? Uh, you can reach me on my cell phone at 661-213-6857. You can reach out to me on Facebook. I am the only Lee Barrison on Facebook that I know of. So I'm pretty easy to find. Um, IG handle, same thing, at Lee Barrison. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any questions about the area or if you guys have any referrals or anybody that needs help buying or selling, or if you're a real estate agent that actually wants to produce, give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> no slackers, only producers. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Uh, Lee, uh, G, Lee, Gene, being the ever, uh, you know, best marketer in the world that you are, how, how can people get a hold of you? Here's how good I am. I get all the people to do my bidding for me. Tell them where to find me, Greg. Uh, that'd be GeneVolpe.com. <laughs> work out of you.
<laughs> and and why, Gene, specifically, should people reach out to you? Yes. Uh, I don't, you want to tell them? I don't know. God, you're like horrible. <laughs> I love it. This is actually fun for me. I, You know what? Oh, no. Maybe. How about if we just leave this out there? We don't know. Why don't you call me and find out why you should call me? How about that? Horrible. <laughs> because that is not a clear, compelling idea. I want two sentences out of you. Give me two sentences of the most clear, compelling reason why somebody should reach out to you. Call me because you ha you feel the need to get exposed. That's exactly what I'm going to write on a bathroom stall at your favorite bar. All right, <laughs> God's sake. So bad. Oh, oh, my God. Greg, how do people connect with you? Guys, I'm going to offer out a special invitation, uh, and you guys can go to bookmcdaniel.com if you want to talk about EXP, but if you guys want to do some uh, an hour of free coaching or something like that or whatever else, you want to bounce an idea off me with some prospecting thoughts, uh, go ahead and text me, uh, my cell, 925-915-1978, and we can have a conversation and go from there. Matt, uh, rating reviews of the podcast, and how do people get booked on podcasts? Mm. They go to pursuingresults.com slash training where you learn how to craft your story hook so that you can reach out and pitch yourself on podcasts and actually get podcast hosts who say yes and are excited to have you show up and share your story. So that is at pursuingresults.com slash training. Um, we can uh, go to uh, Apple Podcasts on your phone. It's probably the best way to leave us a review. You can also go to iTunes on your uh, desktop or your laptop computer. Leave us a review. Give us five stars, preferably. And then, especially if you enjoyed a particular guest like Lee today, make sure to give him a shout out in the review. Let him know that you appreciate him showing up and contributing. Like, Lee is not, you know, getting paid to be here. He's giving his very valuable time as the leader of an organization to give back. Uh, Lee, you've also got your own podcast. So, like, you're you're super busy. you got a lot going on. Um, so, yeah, for those that, uh, that leave us a rating or review, make sure to thank the guest in it. So, Well, uh, let's talk about that. Lee, what is your podcast? Mm -hmm. uh, good question. It's the Be Better podcast. Just like hustle, be better. Um, <clears throat> basically, it's um, it's not ne necessarily real estate driven, but it's local entrepreneurs here in town that I uh, I interview, and uh, they tell their real story about how easy it is to make a lot of money in entrepreneurship. That was a joke. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I, was, I was waiting for the shoe to drop. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, so they, it's 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 just you know the real deal about uh, you know because I mean everybody wants to be an entrepreneur nowadays, but they don't realize all the pain and time and agony and sweat and tears that's involved in in uh, in pursuing that yeah. that that, uh, that position. So. It is not easy. It, it, it They make it look sexy and fun, but it is a hustle grind. You're not out eating like fine dining in your three-piece suit. You're usually eating you know, PB&J sitting at your desk, hustling and doing calls and emails while you shovel food into your face, if you remember to eat that day uh, yeah. until you get it made, and then you get bored because you achieved your goal. Then you start this whole fucking meat grinding process over again on a new venture. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard road, but it's a fucking fun road, too, if you really it like what you're going after. You don't chase the money. You chase the end result well the money is the byproduct i think you know and and just going back to like before we close you know uh we were talking about serving others you know and, and really engaging with somebody caring about their situation the deal is the byproduct you know what i mean take get taking that listing is the byproduct of being engaged and actually genuinely wanting to help that person you know what i mean yeah. the money is the byproduct you know it is and, it always uh, will be mm -hmm. it always will be all right, cool. Um, Thanks, guys. Well, what? Don't you don't go anywhere. Shut up, man. <laughs> Damn, we're I know we're not that boring. Um, Matt, what color bow do we, do we need to put on this today? Oh man, uh, I'm gonna go with a lovely olive green. Olive Hawaiian. green bow. A green That's bow right. for green money. I All up. right, I know around this episode. All right, guys, here's an olive green bow on this episode. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for watching and sharing. Share it to all your peeps. Uh, if you guys felt this was something uh, you know, that was value and you better think it was a value. Lee, thank you. You're a legend of myth among all of us men, so I appreciate your time. I love you. Matt likes you. Gene adores you. And until next time, peace out, ninjas. Love We're you, guys. Out.